No other day more significant. This day that we call Easter, Passover, Resurrection, is the anchor to our Christianity. The fact that Jesus lives, and not only does he live, but hear me, my friend, the message of Easter is Jesus lives, and he will come back again. Yet I want to thank our worship team and sing and pray. Good morning, double time today. We had a tremendous sunrise service at 6 o'clock, our 20th annual, or something like that. I don't even remember. I quit counting. But God blessed us with a tremendous crowd, and they were there Amen. working overtime. Greg is in to get there with their three little kids at 6 o'clock in the morning, ready to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of us don't have kids, and we can't make it. But they do well. That's why God continues to bless them. We had a phenomenal Good Friday service. Thank you to all, all of you that came. Thank you so much. And supported Faith Factor. Faith Factor put that together. I was just a guest speaker. But we will have a, 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 a Good Friday service from now on. I think it's very significant that we realize and understand that all of this didn't start at the cross. It started way before the cross. Do you realize that the first drop of blood that was shed for me and you was not shed on the cross? It was shed at the Garden of Gethsemane when his sweat turned into blood. It started way at the Garden. It started on Thursday night before it was Friday night. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, man, that sounds like a good one. <laughs> well, I want to I, I wanna talk to you for the next few minutes on, of course, Easter. But I, I, I really feel as if, the, or have felt, just the past several days, as if the heart of God would want me to kind of look at it a little more different so that it does not become your traditional resurrection sermon. I think we have heard all the resurrection sermons we can hear and rightfully so. We need to decree, we need to declare it every opportunity that we get that our Jesus, our Savior is alive. I believe that. But I also believe that it ought not to be a one day hype. I believe that it should be, the resurrection should be uh, a door opener, for a lack of another word, a door opener for every single one of us to enter to new, a new era, a new level, uh, in not only in our lives, but in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Is that all right with you? Yeah. Can we talk this morning? Yeah. I know that... Um, Many people will celebrate this day with friends and family. And what's everybody going to do? Eat. Yes. Come on. What's everybody going to do? Eat. That's how we roll here. <laughs> we're going to celebrate this day with family and friends. And then we're going to go right back to life as normal. I really, I was really uh, moved by 9-11, not only by what happened. But what moved me is what happened after 9-11. I mean, nobody was flipping you off on the freeway. Everybody was letting you cut in. Nobody was honking at you, calling you names. Everybody was smiling. People didn't even know each other. Hi, how are you? And, 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 and that went on for, for, for several months. It went on for several months, but then after a while, people went back to normal. life as normal. There's a great story in Acts chapter 12 that tells us about what happened after Easter. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about 
What about after Easter? That's the deep title of my sermon. What about after Easter? That story in Acts 12 that talks about what happened after Easter that, that was really significant. So I've been praying that this message this morning will speak to your life. Because God has plans for you, not only about Easter, but what happens after Easter that are even greater. Can you say amen? amen? So let's get to this message, and I pray this message will build your faith. If you would go with me, please, to Acts chapter 12, verse 4. There it is. Show off. Good job. Verse 4 says this, after arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover or after Easter. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after Easter. Now, I, I want you to stop reading there, and I want to approach the Easter story from a different direction. Understand that Herod had just beheaded James and then arrested Peter, and totally planned and intended to do the same thing to Simon Peter that he was about to destroy him and destroy the apostles and the leadership of the church. But he had a problem. All of a sudden, he found himself in a collision with his calendar because he knew that they were coming up on the Passover or on Easter. And he knew that it was probably not conducive to kill the church leaders while the Jewish people were celebrating the Passover. And so Herod decided putting a hold on killing the apostles. Please follow me. He had already killed James, and now he was planning to do the same to the others. But because of Easter, he says, here's what I'll do. I'll put everything on hold and, 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 I'll, and call a little reprieve from, calling, from killing the leaders of the church and, and, and bring my killing, stealing, and destroying everything that has the name of Christ in it for later. I'll let them have their little religious ceremony called Passover or Easter. I'll let them all go to the temple I'll let them gather and sing their little songs and do their little rituals of Easter, fully intending, the scripture said, that after Easter, as soon as the Easter service was over, he would go right back, hear me now, to business as usual, doing exactly what he did before he went to the temple. Hmm doing exactly what he did before he went to church. And I think sometimes that Satan has a tendency to overplay his hand. I think that sometimes he thinks he's on a roll and that just because he started some things or started and stirred some things in our life that he can keep them going. But I've just come to say to somebody this morning that it's not going to be like his it has been. I want you to know that we serve a God that has entered, that has interrupted the intentions of our adversary. adversary. We serve a God that can interrupt the plans of our adversary. We serve a God that can turn the devil's dream into a nightmare. I would love for God to do the same thing in this service this morning that happened to Herod. He intended afterwards to kill Peter after the Easter service. After the Easter service, he was still going to kill Peter. There's no doubt in my mind that there's people here this morning. I've been a pastor for over 30 years and I've seen so many people who come just on Easter. No, it's not that kind of a service. If you're one of those, just relax. We love you. Glad you're here. And they fully intended. I don't know if I should preach this. And they fully intended. They have full intentions after the Easter celebration 
a church to go right back to the same life they had been living before they came. What about after Easter? What about after Easter? This is the little reprieve. Some of you have a uh, I was kidnapped and dragged by a relative look on your face right now. <laughs> and it's okay. Because, because they come intending. Okay, okay, just, just, I, I, I came just to get somebody off my, my back. I'll go to, to Easter service just to get them off my back. And all of a sudden what happened is, the risen Christ shows up and you might have fully intended to go back in the, to the same darkness, the same depression, the same fear, and the same worry that you were in. But when you encounter Jesus Christ in a real way, he's alive in your life, you will not return from what you pay. You will not leave the same. I'd love you to know that the enemy has to take his day planner out and start erasing things he was planning to do to marriages here and families at home because the Lord showed up and changed everything on Easter. The intentions changed. People didn't go back to the way that they were before. They were Understand that there's something called divine disruption. You need to write that down someplace. Divine disruption. There's a divine inner intervention. And we need it. We need the same kind of power that can get a hold of a Herod and change his after intentions. Because the Bible records that Peter was set free. And what Herod planned to do to him did not happen after Easter. I believe today the we need to understand that church has to be more. And even these Easter services, they have to be more than just a set aside period of religious activities. We have not just come in here this morning to sing some songs and get excited and get a little bit emotional and hear the same old passage of the resurrection, even though again it's a great message and we are proclaiming it. But there, but 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 here's the deal: it, it, it's our after intentions after Easter. Our intentions after Easter. That's what really matters. It was it was his after intentions. Herods that were changed. And I believe God doesn't want you to just come here and hear about a resurrected Savior and live like he's dead. He wants to bring some intentions that are changed after Easter. Hallelujah. You don't go back to your pre-proposed intentions. It's called a divine disruption. Preaching should be more than entertaining. It should be life rearranging. Preaching in church should be more than just gripping and grinning and shaking hands and, 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 and where are you going to eat after service? You know how you do. No, no, no. I, I want God, God to come into this room this morning and I want God to change some marriages that, that, that have walked in fully intending to get a divorce after Easter. But this Easter service can be a resurrection power service in your marriage, in your home, in your children, in your business, in your ministry. Maybe someone walked in discouraged, greatly depressed. This could be a service where you do not go back into darkness because of Jesus. It's called the divine disruption. What about after Easter? Can I continue? Yes. Ezekiel 33 1. And they hear your words, but 
but they do not do them. service more than 35 years. I've preached more than 20 of them. How many have you heard? How many sunrise services have you attended? Have you got it yet? Have you, no, no, have you really got it yet? Do you really understand it as a whole right about now? And they hear your words, and they do not do them. They hear the preaching. The question is, what are your real intentions after today's service? The most important part is not the singing. It's not even the preaching. The most important part is your response. Because if the preaching and the singing doesn't cost you to have a change in your intentions after the service, then it did not make a difference in your life. The resurrection sermon didn't make a difference. The sunrise service didn't make a difference. If it doesn't change your intentions for after Easter. Sure was quiet in this Pentecostal church. We were yelling a while ago. Can I go on? I'm the senior pastor. I was going to do it anyway. But I want God to give us an intervention that radically changes. I want God to give us an everlasting change. The measure of this meeting this morning is how changed you are when you leave. Amen. That's how effective. Yes, come on. That's how this service will be measured is if you were changed after you heard it. That's our measured stick. We have, if it hasn't changed you, then I submit to you that we have failed to proclaim Jesus like he needs to be proclaimed. Churches need pastors that are changed. Children need parents that are changed. Wives need husbands that are changed. Husbands need wives that are changed. We need change. We don't need to just come and call a reprieve on our anger and our bitterness and our angry words and just go to church and why don't I just shut up and act religious and act like glory to God, hallelujah, and as soon as the service is over, go right back into hell on earth. What about after Easter? Come on now. What are your after Easter intentions this morning. Hearing all of these services in here, what good does it do if we got walk out of here and it doesn't change anything? The most major change that comes in most people's lives is in the first three years that they follow the Lord. We ask new converts to change, uh, to change everything. Change who you hang out with. Change this. Change that. Change things. Change things about your life. But when was the last time you added something to your conviction list if you've been here more than three years? When's the last time you walked out of a church service and said, I'll never be the same again? When's the last time you felt such a change that you had intended to do something but the Holy Spirit pricked your heart in a service you were going to tell somebody off or do something. You may be a teenager and you're planning a party tonight. Wrong service by the way. Because the Lord's going to 
to change your intentions and he's going to do it this morning. Yeah. Oh, you better do that. I know you can. It's a huge time here this morning. Let's really give God the praise that he deserves. And you came here planning and scheming and you came here sneaking around and you've got your own little secrets but the Lord has your number and I'm sorry this is not a seeker sense of service this morning. I'm going to read your mail. I'm going to get all in your business because you need a change and God has a plan for your life and he's going to change your after intention. Be 
says, okay, okay. You got a choice. You can either elevate or marinate in that stuff. You can either marinate in that bitterness and that unforgiveness and that hatred or that pain, the discouragement, whatever it is. You can marinate or you can use it to make you, to make you. It's all up to you. You can wallow in your grief and in your sorrow or wallow in your divorce or you can marinate in it or you can elevate. You can get miracle legs. That's what happened to the lame man and God can cause you to come up also. Amen. You can be discouraged but your after intentions can be God through your glory, your joy, your strength. I will not let my past paralyze me anymore. Genesis 41, the Bible says that Joseph had a dream. Please hear me. Look at me. Hear me. And in that dream, he saw fat cows and skinny cows. Do not turn to look at anybody. <laughs> Just right here. I stopped some of you guys just in time. You almost blew your, your Easter right there. Man, you guys. Kind of wise up. And the skinny cows in this dream that he had, the skinny cows swallowed the fat cows. And when the skinny cows swallowed the fat cows, have you ever seen a picture of that big python that just swallowed like a big mouse? Yeah. I hate to ruin your Easter dinner, but and then you see that thing, that mouse kind of traveling through that python. Anybody seen that besides me? You would think that the skinny cows would show that they just ate a big cow. But, but listen to what the Bible said. It says that they were still lean, ill-favored, and unhealthy cows. Now here's what I want you to see. I think that that's what happens to a lot of people who come to church. Not fat and skinny cows, no. That's up to you. Here's what I want you to say. I really believe that's what happens to a lot of people who come to church. What's that, Pastor? They're fed spiritually a T-bone steak, a filet mignon. They hear about Jesus. They get in a service. They hear the word of God. They get an anointed atmosphere. But when they walk out of doors, they're still in a wreck shape. And nobody can tell that there's a change. And they're still angry. They're still upset. They're still bitter. And they're still unforgiving. Something is wrong when you keep hearing the word being served, served, and served, getting the meat of God's word. And at some point, it ought to start showing. At some point, somebody's ought to start seeing a change in your life. You should still be ill and unhealthy and weak and unrighteous. There ought to be some help, strength, joy, peace. Where's the change? Do we just come in here to hear the word? Or to be changed? And I had to make a choice putting this message together. Do I come in here and give a little Easter message and charge everybody up? Or am I going to come in and preach what I believe is the heart of God that will change everybody up? A charge or a change? A charge or a change. God's saying, I don't want you to just sit in another service and hear just another message and even not in agreement and say, yes, he's Lord, yes, he's risen, yes, he's Savior, yes, he can change a life and walk out and still be addicted, still be bound, still be skinny spiritually and weak and whatever the enemy throws at you, you cannot overcome it, depression, fear, or worry after you've made all those declarations about Jesus. What about after Easter? I'm asking you today, I'm asking you this morning, how much change has the message of the resurrection brought into your family, into your home, into your life, into your ministry, into your business? How much change has the message of the resurrection brought into your life? Or will you go back 
to the same way you were before you came. One day, the day of Pentecost, it was defined by two of nature's strongest elements. Hear this. Two of, the, the two, two of nature's strongest elements, which were wind and fire. And the Bible said that a mighty wind blew into the upper room, and then fire set upon each of their tongues. Wind and fire. Now understand. Wind rearranges things. Fire redefines things. And if the Holy Spirit had any work that he wanted to do in your life, it would be to rearrange and redefine and change you. And the point is this, that you cannot change yourself. You can't do it on your own. It's not enough to have good intentions and say, I'm going to try to do better. Remember, you did that on the first January, and where are we now? <laughs> Can't do it on your own. That's the only point. Don't read any more into that. The only point is you cannot do it on your own. I'm going to try to do better. No, it takes the Holy Spirit's wind and the fire of the Holy Ghost to redefine and rearrange and change your life and clean out all of those things and rearrange your life. And He's here today. If God had anything in mind at Pentecost, it was change. And something in my heart's crying out, Lord, this morning, don't let it be like other Easter mornings. Lord, this morning, change families. Families that are in disarray. Families that are in pain. Families that are fighting. Families that are hurting. And God, change us too. Lord, don't let me come into your presence and have the intention that as soon as all this is over, I go right back to that situation. Don't let me come into your presence like that. Yes. Right back to that hurt. Right back to the bottom. Right back to the pits. Right back to the attitudes. Don't let me come into your presence like that if that's my intention after church. After resurrection service, after Passover, after Easter. Some of you are planning things even this week. I'm preaching to you and I'm telling you that God's going to change your after Easter intentions, after this service. Oh, someone ought to praise it right there. I really believe in God.
Now they're coming in to celebrate the feast. They're coming in to worship. Ah, like you did today. And this would be your instruction. But when the people of the land come before the Lord on appointed feast days on Easter, when they come to church, whoever enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by the south gate. Whoever enters by the way of the south gate, in case you didn't get what he just said, shall go out by the way of the north gate. He shall not return. He shall not return by way of the gate through which he came, but shall go out through the opposite gate. Now when you come and worship God, if you come in one way, one way, you are not allowed to go back the same way you came in. If you come in this way, then you better go out a different way. If you come in this way, then you better go out a different way. But you are not After Easter, you came in one way today, and you are not allowed to go out the same way you came in this morning. Amen. Amen. This, my friend, is what we call the law of worship. This is referred to as the law of worship. But when the people of the land come before the Lord, that's what we do here. On the appointed feast days on Easter, whoever enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by way of the south. And a wilder enters by the way of the south gate, shall go out by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by way of the gate through which he came in. It is not allowed. Not in the law of worship. You cannot come into a place like this, my friend, and worship God supposedly with all of your heart and still have these intentions to go back to the way it was before you came. None of you understand the law of worship. The law of worship says you cannot go back the same way you came in. That's true worship, Pastor. That's true worship. So what about after you see? What about after the celebration to get your house with the party? After you eat all that barbecue? Menudo, gorditas, tortillas, chile. Why don't we just hit the service now and go eat? What are your intentions going to be like? Are you guys back there going back to the same thing? Are you guys over here going back to the same thing? Is everybody in this section? Now, what are your intentions after Easter? Hey, what about after Easter? You can't go out the same way you came in. Give the Lord praise. God said, I have only one law concerning worship on these feast days, on Easter or Passover, when you come in, if you come in one door, and you come in one way, and you get in my presence, you are forbidden to turn around and leave the same way you came. The law of worship said, you come in the north gate, you have to leave the south gate. The opposite of the way you came in. Yeah. You know what that says? If you came in carnal, you're going to leave 
spiritual.